Hey, welcome back to captainsoup.com. I'm Mary Reddick, I'm the Director of Nutrition, and today we're gonna to discuss snacking, where it originated, if it's healthy, and if we should do it or not. So snacking is so natural today. It's interesting when I work with children in my practice, oftentimes schools are even mandating that children bring snacks for set hours of the day, and, and this is not one snack. This is multiple snacks in addition to lunch. So when these kids are on a medical diet for autism or seizure disorders or cancer, it can get a bit tricky in terms of bringing food to school. So I thought it would be interesting to do a video on the history of snacking and why it's not the best idea. Many people are surprised to learn that this idea of eating four to five times a day, even six times a day, is, is very new. In traditional cultures and even in our Western culture, really until after World War II, people did not snack. You had set meal times. It would either be twice a day or three times a day, and you would eat with your family and then you would be done. You wouldn't have a snack after school and these kind of things. The idea of snacking and eating frequently came from two things. One was that in the early 1900s, we started to really upset our blood glucose numbers and our inflammation scale with bringing in high carb foods. The idea of cereal was invented by the Kellogg community and they publicized it very well. So people started to eat a lot of carbs for breakfast, which was not traditionally done. You know, we think of some of the traditional uh, European cultures and say, oh, well, the French have a croissant, but the croissant is actually a pretty new invention as well. And it's 50% fat. It's actually not high carb at all. So I don't recommend it if you're trying to heal from something, but if you're healthy, it's not actually as bad as it looks. Now, cereal, on the other hand, is, is not great. Neither is oatmeal, and these were not traditional human foods. Uh, oatmeal was only used for horses. It wasn't until Quaker came about and sold it as a health food that people bought into that. Now, what happened is that when you start your day with a high sugar, high carb food, it spikes your blood sugar, and you go through the day with large dips and dives. Think of peaks and valleys. Every time you go through a dive from that, your body requests more blood sugar to fill it up again. And so it's a very inflammatory, unhealthy cycle that requires more frequent feeding. Whereas if you have a low carb or a zero breakfast, you do intermittent fasting, your blood sugar is quite stable through the day and you can go long periods of time without eating. You eat maybe one, two meals in a day and you're good to go. That's really ideal. Now, the second factor that came into this was the snack culture that was invented after World War II. Many of the chemicals that were developed during the war process happened to work for food stabilization. So we had shelf stable foods for long periods of time and this allowed the birth of many processed food companies to sell the idea of snacking multiple times a day. Now this came at a good time because people's blood sugar was so destabilized that they felt like they needed to eat. In fact, if I get someone who uh, complains of low blood sugar saying, I have to eat every two hours or I get hangry, I get shaky, uh, I get all sorts of mood issues, I know that their issue is actually from eating too many carbs. So the first thing we do is reduce, reduce their total carbs completely and have them eating frequently. And then once their blood sugar stabilizes, we can break them apart to three meals a day or two meals a day and they're much healthier. They don't have those ups and downs anymore. So that's the history of snacking. I highly don't recommend it. Every time we eat, even if it's a healthy food, even if it's a low carb food, it's gonna spike our insulin regardless. So uh, it's not a great idea, especially since imbalance insulin levels and metabolic uh, inflexibility are associated with all of the chronic diseases today in our modern society. It, there's nothing you can do better for yourself than get your blood sugar in, in order and get your metabolic health in order as well. Okay, signing off. This is Mary Reddick for CaptainSoup.com. Ask me any questions below and we'll see you on the next one.